Welcome. Thank you for joining us on this CURE program. We'll be discussing non-Hodgkin lymphoma, including the various disease subtypes that comprise this general term, but probably more importantly discussing the patient journey through the various treatments and survivorship that are encompassed with this disease. Joining me today, I have uh, Whitney Neighbors, who's someone I also care quite a bit about. It's important to note that she's my clinical patient as I work at MD Anderson at Houston uh, in the lymphoma clinic. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So we're going to cover non-Hodgkin lymphoma. As I mentioned, this is something I spend a great deal of time um, learning about and treating patients with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. I think where I start in the clinic is describing what non-Hodgkin lymphoma means. And we'll get your perspective on when you were first diagnosed, what was your impression of the term of non-Hodgkin lymphoma? I had no idea <clears throat> what it meant. I, had, I knew that there were two different, or generally two different types of lymphoma, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's, but I couldn't tell you what the difference was. I didn't know what it meant. I knew generally that lymphoma was a cancer of the blood, but otherwise was unfamiliar with it. it I'd never had it impact my life through a family member or, or friend, or so I really didn't have any information. And I think that's true for most patients. I think it is an uncommon entity. So most are familiar with breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer. They've either experienced it themselves or they've had a family member have had this. So it's not uncommon when I meet patients for the first time that they know the term non-Hodgkin lymphoma. They don't really know what that means. And I think where it becomes even more burdensome is when we start talking about staging. And as you mentioned, this is a blood cancer. And so if you think about your blood and the fact that it goes throughout your whole body, the vast majority of patients will have advanced stage disease. So I spend most of my time beginning, and you can attest to this, kind of going over what the diagnosis is and what the stage and what that means. So in my opinion, I think it's important to know the type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma because that determines more than the stage. It determines more than anything in terms of my expectation for you and whether or not you're going to be here 10 or 15 years from now, because I think that's what most people want to know. Mm -hmm. And so what I generally express is that there are different types. So there's a T-cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma, there's a B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And the B-cell lymphomas are so much more common that that's the vast majority of how most patients present. And then we break it down a little bit further. There are indolent non-Hodgkin lymphomas of the B-cell subtype, and there are aggressive non-Hodgkin lymphoma subtypes. You actually have diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is our most common um, B-cell lymphoma subtype. And what I shared with you at the beginning and what I share with all patients is that this is very curable, regardless of the stage. So I think that's the most important thing to remember when you're meeting an oncologist because there's so much information that's shared with you and it can be overwhelming, but staying focused on what the goal, and the goal is cure. And what that means is we give generally between four and six cycles of chemotherapy Occasionally we include radiation, though oftentimes we do not. And at the end of that, we expect the lymphoma to be gone and never come back. Is there anything I missed in that description that you recall from those early visits? No, I think it was, um, it was always, you always did such a great job of sort of breaking it down and being very patient and answering all of the questions that I would have because she, it is so overwhelming to learn that you, have this disease and um, then what do you go from here? I think cancer has that stigma of you're going to die. So when you hear that word, it's very, very intimidating and frightening and to be able to walk in to your doctor and have them comfort you and explain to you how this works, what it's done to your body, you're going to be okay because we're going to follow this protocol and be able to get through those stages. I think you, you did all of those things and helped me understand what was in front of me, that it wasn't going to be easy, but that there was a path forward and that we would do it and um, hopefully get to the other side and be in that, that category that is the success and the cure rate. So, so far, so good. <laughs> I agree. And to be fair, we'll cover the other lymphoma subtypes, though Whitney has the most common, and again, the goal is cure, there are others that that may not be the goal. And so the indolent lymphoma specifically, the goal may be giving someone a normal life expectancy, but that may not be without disease or without the expectation that it will come back. So oftentimes when you're sitting in waiting rooms, when you're sharing your story with other patients, 
Keep in mind that non-Hodgkin lymphoma may comprise 60 different diseases when we start to break it down according to all the individual subtypes and the expectation the treatment may be vastly different. But I think if you keep it in the terms of is it a T-cell lymphoma or a B-cell lymphoma, is it an aggressive or versus an indolent, then you may have some very common things and common goals.